Hi, this is Reese from Code Consortium, and here with another ANSI C video tutorial. Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 3, part 3. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to do switch statements. What a switch statement is, is a way to do lots of if statements, except you don't have to write if every time. In the switch statement, what we can do is we can specify one thing to test, and then we can test whether it's equal to a whole bunch of things. So I'll give you an example of that. If we was to put age in age equals zero, like this, then we wanted to test whether age was a whole different bunch of values and for each possible match that we've got we have a specific response for that then what we can do is we can type switch like this if I can spell it properly, there we go and inside the parenthesis we put the variable that we want to use now with a switch statement you can only test integers you can't test strings um, unfortunately so what we can do now is inside here we can type the test cases that we want to test so if we put case and then the value we want to test for example the user's age is zero then we can respond your age is zero or whatever like that and then when we finish writing our test just put break like this then we can test another age for example, we could put test whether you're 18 um, and then put printf you're 18, OK. Uh, like that. And again, put break. So the break basically tells it that it's the end of what we're doing here in this case but actually break means a lot more than that break is a very special keyword it allows you to get out of loops and various conditionals like switch uh, but we haven't covered loops yet so don't worry about that but when we do cover it you'll be seeing a lot more use of the word break so until then uh, let's just look at some other things put, put my age in there like so Like that. And break. Now there's one more keyword for the switch statement. What you can do is you can put default like this. And in any case that none of the above were matched, then we can put whatever we like here. So if it's none of the above test cases, then default will be used. So we can put You did not meet the requirements, it's fine. We just put that for now. And then a break, as per usual. So we could take some input, like this. We can save this to our desktop. We'll call this main.c. And we go back to our compiler. That's compiled. So now let's run, run that. 23, we can run it again. 18, or 18, OK. And then if we put, uh, I don't know, a number that we didn't put there, it uses the default block. So as you can see, if you don't specify a value within one of the test cases you will use the default so that's how you use the switch statement pretty simple you can have as many test cases as you like it really doesn't matter how many you have you don't need to use bracing it and if you want you can have more than one line as well you could put as many lines in here as you like like so and as long as it's between case and break, it's fine. Where you've got case here, it's important that after the number that you're testing, you include a colon, and after break, use a semicolon. Because a semicolon indicates that it's the end of a statement. So that's a statement, and this is a statement, and this is a statement. But here we need to make sure that we use a colon, okay? So don't put no semicolons there, otherwise none of this will get executed, and it might even throw a compiler error. 
so I hope that's of help to you. In the next part I'm going to show you how to use nested if statements and nested switch statements so that you can implement multiple decisions. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check regularly for the next video in the series of NCC tutorials. For further discussion on programming, visit the forum on codeconsortium.com where you can post your questions and advice. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. See you next time.